I'm Angie Smith and I represent the Junior Achievement Office in Cincinnati. Today we're going to do a volunteer training. This is a one-time only training that you'll need to go through for your first time volunteering for Junior Achievement. Feel free to come back and use this again as a refresher, but it's only needed for the first time. Junior Achievement is a for impact organization, meaning we teach children how to be career ready, about entrepreneurship, and about financial literacy. In our area, we cover about 40 to 45,000 students per year. In the United States, 4.8 million participate in our programs, and then globally, we have 5 million students. The class model. If you're teaching a program that's within the elementary, it's kindergarten through fifth grade, there are five sessions each session being about 45 minutes each, with the exception of kindergarten, which is only 30 minutes. If you're teaching in middle school, it is six to seven program, or I'm sorry, sessions, and then high school is five to seven sessions, depending on the program, each program is a little different. The volunteer role, that's you. You're gonna be in the classroom, for about 45 minutes each time. If you can go a couple minutes early your first time in the classroom just to see the lay of the land, see where you can hang up your posters, what the classroom's like, are the class, is the students in pods? If you're putting them in groups, you'll already have these groups made for you. Have fun with the students. Be prepared and punctual. Be committed. If you're not able to make your program anymore, please let your junior achievement person know and your teacher. That way we can find another volunteer for them. If you need to cancel for a day for whatever reason, please have your teacher's contact information, which will be sent to you by your JA person, or if you are in your child's class, you already have the teacher's information. The teacher role. The teacher will always be in the classroom with you. Use them as a resource. If there are already behavior issues, which usually is just the students being so excited to see you, they don't know how to calm down, let the teacher take care of this. They often have a way to get their, teacher, their students focused right back with claps, chants, or any type of routine that they've already embedded into their students' minds. So please use them. Also, if you're putting students in groups, use them as a resource. They know who works well together, and more importantly, who doesn't work well together. So allowing them to help you put groups together will make your activity run smoother. Student characteristics. Know what kind of students you're gonna have in your classroom. There's a lot of difference between a kindergartner and a fourth grader. So know what kind of things may get their attention and how to be more engaging with them. Digital assets. In some of our kits, you will see it mentioned digital assets. This is basically the same stuff that's in your kit, but just available for you to put up on the screen. So don't feel like you're missing anything if you can't get it to come up or if you are not able to sign in. It's just the same poster that you already have or a handout that you already have in your kit, just available for you to put up on a screen if you'd like to. Classroom management and teaching techniques. This is a lot of information, but a couple that I like to highlight are use examples from the students' communities. Something that they're gonna see when they're out in their communities with their families on the weekends or in the evenings. It helps drive home the point of what you were talking about. If you use a community that is 15 to 20 minutes away from where your students are, your students may not know what you're talking about. If you try to use downtown Cincinnati and maybe you are not anywhere near that location, they may not be able to quite grasp what you're talking about. Also, if you're using examples about how you're gonna spend money or what a need and a want is, use something that the students might like for that age group. It helps keep them engaged with you and more interested in what you're saying. Staff contacts. These are the other people that work in our region that do what I do. So if you would like to maybe work in or volunteer in an area that is close to where you work or your home, please contact one of these groups. We would love to have you volunteer in our classroom. If we could have more volunteers, we can impact more students. This is your 
checklist of things that uh, we would like you to do so we can count your time and your students participating in the program. First of all is your volunteer conduct standards form, which just basically captures your information, your contact information. We have to have that each school year. You can do that paper form or you can do that through a link that is in this file that will be sent to you. Contact the teacher. Let them know that you've been trained, you have your materials, and you're ready to go. This will allow you guys to set up a time to be in the classroom. Now what we typically recommend is that you do it once a week for five to seven weeks, depending on how long your program is. We understand that there's snow days, sickness, and things that just come up. So that allows you to move things around if needed. If you want to do it in a shorter amount of time, twice a week, and get it done in two and a half weeks, that's fine as well. You can even do it once a day for a week. It's whatever your schedule allows and what will work for the teacher's curriculum as well. All that we ask is that you don't set it up where you're doing it once every other week because then that could take 10 to 15 weeks to complete and that's just so much time to ask of anybody's schedule and the students start to forget what you talked about on your first visit. Things to ask the teacher is how many students are in your class. All of our kits come with materials for 30 students. That's pretty typical and usually you have a couple of extras left over. Are there any students with any kind of special needs? If you have a student that has mobility issues, if you're doing an activity that asks them to move around the room, you may want to rethink how you could do that activity to kind of help the student participate. How does the teacher encourage orderly conduct do, or participation? Do they raise hands um, or can they, they ask questions out loud? You'll kind of get the feel of that when you first go in the classroom. And where to hang your visual aids. Many classes nowadays have smart boards, so please ask your teacher where they would like the posters to be hung before putting stuff up on the smart boards. We don't want anything to be damaged. All right, at the very end of your program, there are certificates of achievement. And I would highly recommend this for kindergarten through fifth grade. I think six through 12 probably don't value it as much, but it's really good for the kindergarten through fifth grade. And you can give this to the teacher your fourth or even the fifth time that you're there and have them fill it out. It has student's name, the school, your name, teacher's name, and the date. So I often recommend volunteers to save just five minutes at the end of their last session and have the students come up, get their certificate of uh, participation, and do a little bit of a handshaking talk about the proper ways to handshake and get, give out the certificate. It's a great warm fuzzy feeling to end your program and I highly recommend it. Now when you're completely finished you will be getting an email from Junior Achievement. And we're asking for three pieces of information and it'll be there in the email so you don't have to remember this but here's what we're looking for. We're looking for did you finish all of your sessions? How many students were in the class? And what was the date of your last session? With those three pieces of information, we're able to count the students as participating in our programs and counting your time as being a volunteer with us. This allows us to be able to go back to our donors and say, this is what we did with our money that you gave us. All of our money is given to us by grants, corporations, and individual donors. The schools do not pay for the programs. So, to do this, we have to have volunteers to be in the classroom. And that's where you come in, and that's where we really appreciate your time and your effort to impact your local community. Thank you, and more importantly, have fun with it. Being in the classroom can be a great time and allows you to interact with the students, maybe even your own student, and see the great things that happen in our classrooms. Alright, now you have your materials, you have your kit, and you're ready to go. It should look something similar to this, and we'll have everything that you need for your program, up to 30 students. Now, if you would open up your kit, in the front and in the back, there is a book that says Guide for Volunteers and Teachers. There's two of those. Again, one in the front, one in the back. If you would please get that out and turn to around page 7. 
you're going to see a list of materials that are in your kit. Please look through this and make sure that you have everything that it has listed in your kit. Every once in a while, there'll be something missing. It's very rare, but we want to have plenty of time to get that to you if you find that you're missing anything. If you turn the page, you'll see session one. Now, no matter what program you're doing, kindergarten through seniors, you're going to have this same layout. It's going to have overview, objections, and preparation. Now, a couple of nights before I go into the classroom, I'll sit down with the book and read the section front to end. This is your book. You can highlight in it, you can write notes in it, whatever you would like to do to make you feel like you are more prepared and comfortable to talk with the students. You'll see a list of the materials that you're gonna need for your kit. If you would, before you go into the classroom, pull everything out of your kit and put it all in session order. At the bottom of each corner, either on the front or on the back of the materials, it will tell you exactly what you're holding and what session you use it in. So this is the Certificate for Achievement used in session five. Please pull everything out of your kit when you have a moment and put it all in session order. Session one, session two, and work your way down the table. That way, you know when you pick up that pile for session one, you put it in your plastic kit and you know that you have everything needed for that day. It allows a more smooth transition once you get in the classroom and start getting your materials out and ready to go. Now, if it says you're gonna use post-it notes, the post-it notes are in there. Everything that you need for your classroom is gonna be in that kit, with the exception of pencils, scissors, markers, crayons. We assume that that's gonna be in a typical classroom, so that's not in there, but everything else is. Now, you'll see every once in a while there are digital assets listed in your program. Now, what that is, it is just a digital version of the things that are in your kit. It might be a poster, it might be a handout, that's all it is. Now with third grade, there are some cartoon videos that they have put into each session, and those are great. And they're entertaining, they help drive home your point. But if technology is not your friend that day, and the internet's not working, or there's some kind of issue with the computer and the teacher can't bring it up, it doesn't ruin the session. It's just an extra resource, it's just a fun thing to have, so don't sweat it if it won't work. You can go ahead and move on to the other part of your session um, and, the, and the students won't miss anything. So back to how our programs are set up. You are going to have an introduction to five to 10 minutes. It's gonna be a little bit longer the first time you go, just introducing yourself and, and telling the students a little bit about you. Then you're gonna do an activity for 20 to 25 minutes. And then you're gonna do a wrap up 15, or sorry, five to 10 minutes. It's not you standing there talking for 45 minutes. So have fun with it. You're gonna be moving around with the students. Use the students as helpers if you need help passing anything out. Again, remember the teacher's gonna be in the classroom with you. So use them as a resource as well. And just move around the classroom and enjoy your time. If you find that your students are really enjoying the discussion in the intro, it's okay to spend a little bit longer in there. This is just for your time management and to just kind of know where the bulk of your time is going to be spent. If they want to spend a long time talking and having discussions, that just means you're going to have to cut the summary or the activity a little short. If they're really having fun with the activity and you want to give them a, a little bit longer to play the game one more time, then that just means that you need to keep the summary a little shorter. But do keep in mind that, stu that uh, schools are ran in very tight time frames so you may be up against lunch or recess or a special, or it might be the end of the day. So try to keep it no longer than 45 minutes. It's okay to end short about five minutes, but try not to go too much over. All right, in the back of your book, you will find there are some, there's always an extended learning opportunity at the end of each session. This is just something, it's just an extra resource. If you have a teacher that says, this is great discussion, I would love to continue it, you can recommend the extended learning opportunity. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, it's just there. We like to give our volunteers as much resources as we can. Also, depending on what program you're teaching, there can be some answer keys in the very back of your book. There could be a map. Um, there could be 
a budgeting sheet that you can make extra copies of if you needed to or if you wanted to pre-fill it out and that way you could show the class what it was going to look like. There's always a glossary as well. So hopefully you find everything that's needed in your kit and if you find that you are short on any of the materials please let your JA rep know as soon as possible so we can get you those materials before you go in the classroom. Thank you for volunteering.